Did you try swapping around the two lines of code? One of the best ways to improve your coding knowledge is to work out what you think will happen and then try it to see if you were right. Let's look at that loop again. The body of the loop is made up of the three instructions that will be executed after initialization takes place and each time the test is passed successfully, with an update occurring after each execution. They are always executed in order and, unless the program crashes or we deliberately get in the way, they will all be executed. So reading the code, we will tell processing to set the current line drawing width to be the number held in line thick, multiply the number in line thick by two and then store it back into line thick and draw a line. What happens if you swap the order of the stroke weight and the multiplication? Well, in this case, you will multiply the number in line thick by two and then store it back into line thick tell processing to set the current line drawing width to be the number held in line thick, and then draw the line. The straight weight statement tells processing to change line width to the value that is held in line thick when you make the statement. Changing line thick after a stroke weight won't change the stroke weight unless you issue the command again. In our first example, we started drawing lines with a line thick of 1 and then get 2, 4, and so on. In the second example, we start drawing lines from 2, then go to 4, 8, and so on. Changing the order of executed statements inside the repetition in this case means that the thickest line is twice as thick in the second program. But we're not limited to just things like changing line width. We can change anything we like with repetition as long as we can work out how to define that change as a processing statement. So let's go back to our code again. Now, fill 25500 means fill things with red. But we can also change the color of the lines we draw with the stroke statement. So stroke 25500 should give us a red line. Let's change the code to add this line under rect. This way, our first rect will be drawn with the default black line around it, and then we can just draw lines. Our design calls for us to start with black lines and end up drawing red lines, with each one changing the same amount as we head towards red. This is a great case for repetition. First, let's think about what's going to have to change. Up until now, we haven't cared about the stroke color, and we've left it black, drawing lines in it by default. What's the first thing we're going to have to do? We're going to have to add a variable to keep track of the data about how red the line currently is. We'll call it coal track and start it off set to zero. What do we have to add next to ensure that this changes? Well, we need to add some sort of update code that will change the value of coal track and then issue a stroke statement to make the change to the line colors that will be drawn. Changing coal track by itself will do nothing. Where do we add it? inside the loop body where it will get executed repeatedly. In this case, because our design said that we wanted to start with black lines, we make the first stroke statement with coal track at zero and then update the value so that the next repetition will have a redder color. Now let's run that code. Well, we can see it getting redder, but comparing it with the square next to it, it's not totally red. Why not? First, let's ask how many times this loop will execute. We start with i equals 80, and we're going to stop if i is ever equal to or greater than 130. Every time we go around the loop, we add 10 after executing the code and then do the test again. So i will be 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130. But the loop body will only be ex executed up to i equals 120. What value will Coltrack have? We know that the loop will execute five times and that Coltrack must start at zero to start at black, and we also want it to end at 255 because that's going to be red. So we have four steps to add something to zero to get it to 255. Dividing 255 by four gives 63.75, but let's call it 64 and change our code. Let's run it again. Much better. Processing is very well behaved when it comes to things like setting colors to impossible values, and it quietly assumes that any value greater than 255 is 255. Once your line gets to as red as possible, the colors stop changing. OK, now we've gone back over repetition and we've used it to make changes to data, as well as revising some of the core terminology of repetition and getting you to think about how you might use it for designing changes to data. Let's see if you can use that knowledge to correctly identify an image from the code that generated it.